bag. I want the bag. Work my way from a garden to a track. Flip it from a track to a plot full of acres. Do it for the farmers and the producers and the makers. What we even here for? Occasionally I ask it. I know it's more than struggling, anticipating the casket. Reap what we sow, trying to fill up my basket. Life's a plantation, I self law and master. Over the plot, I've been granted on this planet Now we're slanted, cause the chosen been supplanted But if you overstand it, it was spoken Fractured, but we ain't broken Even though some would rather play the role of token We growing Black through the essence of a presence We carry the blood of gods, we carry the mind of peasants Rich black gardens, future look more like Eden Multiply seeds like the seed banks in Sweden Rep my planners on plan according to season Be one cold Switching it up is treason. Black power, family, what we eat. Either we get fed or we feed. Beat one ass. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. What's going on? How's it growing? Salutations. What's happening? Welcome back to B1 Ag. I was John Harris, John Henry Harris, and also that former brand EMC. And here at B1 Ag, we focus on Black agriculture as it pertains to agricultural production, education, marketing, health, food, nutrition, and economics, all for the Black family as well as the Black community. I hope we find you doing well today in a growth state of mind. And we have a great story for you today that we're going to dig into. Uh, we all know that the alternative meat uh, business is really on, is really growing. And this story centers around that alternative meat. Um, today's topic centers around Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates as they highlight a $158 million investment in fungi-based meat and dairy company. Now we've been talking about the alternative meats, you know, plant-based meats and things like that, but this story really highlights how this forward movement into this uh, new e uh, economy is uh, pretty much destined. And there are several reasons behind that. And we will dive deeper into those reasons why. So, uh, Farmer Brian EMC, what do you got to say about this uh, fungi-based meat and dairy food? You know, people like mushroom pizzas, right? Fungus. My mom, uh, when I was growing up, she'd always talk about this movie that came out back in the 70s called Soylent Green. And, you know, maybe we'll touch on that here in a little bit. But the concept was uh, New York City was packed and people had to uh, resort to alternative meat and alternative food sources to feed everybody. <clears throat> You know, it's hard to not play devil's advocate when we have these conversations because, uh, you know, once again, the average farmer is 65 years old. Uh, the land that we've been using for farming, a lot of the soil is depleted. Uh, when you think about things going on like uh, we see going on in the West where there's uh, unpredictable climate, uh, water lossage. There, there's a lot, and, and then you have more consumer demand. You know, as, as the world turns, more people are being born around the world. You know, every individual has a right for at least food, if nothing else. And food doesn't just fall out of the sky. You know, food has to be produced. It has to be grown. Uh, if we're talking about meat, it has to be raised. We have some very uh, serious concerns. We have some very serious concerns when we're thinking about economics, as we've stressed before on here. Uh, where the food system is turning into will def definitely negatively affect the melanated farmers who are, uh, you know, conducting more conventional or traditional operations. This is, uh, you know, I have my pasture, I'm going to run my uh, cows on it. You know, I have my, my chickens. You know, all of these dynamics are changing. Uh, when you have your uh, tech gurus, 
you think about it, Jeff Bezos just stepped down from CEO of Amazon. If you remember, Bill Gates has stepped down from the uh, head of Microsoft, and then a year later, you know, the world changed. And so sometimes in this, this grand game of connect the dots, I just wonder, you know, how connected this is. Uh, when we think about future planning, think about if you're uh, doing oak or, or cedar or any sort of wood, a farmer doing agroforestry is going to have a 40-year, 80-year plan. I know when I put this acorn in the ground, I'm not going to have a tree next year. But, you know, my grandkids, great-grandkids, you know, want to make some money. This plot where I planted these trees are going to have a lot of oak trees that are always going to have value. Uh, and so my thing is, okay, if there's this much planting that goes into just trees, you got to know that there's a lot of planting that goes into the food system. Uh, once again, I would encourage the viewers, if you get a chance, look look up the movie, movie Soylent Green, S-O-Y-L-E-N-T Green. Uh, it was starring Charlton Heston, and this is back in the 70s. And it's very interesting that if, uh, you know, roll some footage and we're going to dive deep into it, bro. Okay, the first uh, video that I'm going to play for y'all as far as related to soil and green is going to be a basically a breakdown of the movie. The movie came out in 1973 and is based, oddly enough, in the year 2022, which is fastly approaching. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Y'all check this out. This is... My name is Lisa, and now I'm going to talk about Soylent Green. In the year 2022, the cumulative effects of overpopulation, pollution and some apparent climate catastrophe have caused severe worldwide shortages of food, water and housing. There are 40 million people in New York City alone, where only the city's elite can afford spacious apartments, clean water and natural food, and even then at horrendously high prices. The homes of the elite usually include concubines who are referred to as furniture and serve the tenants as slaves. Within the city lives NYPD detective Frank Thorne and his aged friend Saul Roth, a highly intelligent analyst referred to as a book. Roth remembers the world when it had animals and real food, and possesses a small library of reference materials to assist Thorne. Thorne is tasked with investigating the murder of the wealthy and influential William R. Simonson, and quickly learns that Simonson had been assassinated and was a board member of Soylent Industries. Soylent Industries, which derives its name from a combination of soy and lentil, controls the food supply of half of the world and sells the artificially produced wafers, including Soylent Red and Soylent Yellow. Their latest product is the far more flavorful and nutritious Soylent Green, advertised as being made from ocean plankton, but is in short supply. As a result of the weekly supply bottlenecks, the hungry masses regularly riot, and they are brutally removed from the streets by means of police vehicles that scoop the rioters with large shovels and dump them within the vehicle's container. With the help of Furniture, Sheryl, with whom Thorne begins a relationship, his investigation leads to a priest that Simonson had visited and confessed to shortly before his death. The priest is only able to hint at a gruesome truth before he himself is murdered. By order of the governor, Thorne is instructed to end the investigation, but he presses on. He is attacked during a riot, by the same assassin who killed Simonson, but the killer is crushed by a police vehicle. Roth brings two volumes of oceanographic reports Thorne had procured from Simonson's apartment to the team of books at the Supreme Exchange. The books confirm that the oceans no longer produce plankton, and deduce that Soylent Green is produced from some inconceivable supply of protein. They also deduce that Simonson's murder was ordered by his fellow Soylent Industries board members, knowing he was increasingly troubled by the truth. 
Roth is so disgusted with his life in a degraded world that he decides to return to the home of God and seeks assisted suicide at a government clinic. Thorne finds a message left by Roth and rushes to stop him, but arrives too late. Roth and Thorne are mesmerized by the euthanasia process's visual and musical montage, long gone forests, wild animals, rivers and ocean life. Before dying, Roth whispers what he has learned to Thorne, begging him to find proof, so that the Council of Nations can take action. Thorne boards a truck transporting bodies from the euthanasia center to a recycling plant, where the secret is revealed, human corpses are being converted into Soylent Green. Thorne is spotted and kills his attackers, but is himself wounded. As Thorne is tended to by paramedics, he urges his police chief to spread the truth he has discovered and initiate proceedings against the company. While being taken away, Thorne shouts out to the surrounding crowd, Soylent Green as people. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for more of these videos. Now, as we look at what's going on currently today in real time, uh, Soylent Green, again, made in 1973, based about the year 2022. We're in year 2021. And they were talking about how in 2022, uh, they were, the world was facing uh, food shortages, uh, climate change, catastrophic climate events, uh, you know, looking for alternative protein sources. Hmm. You know, it kind of makes us revisit that uh, old uh, that old adage about whether art imitates life or does life imitate art? Uh, because that movie that was made back in 1973, even before I was even born, is exactly what we're going through right now in 2021 as we approach the year 2022 very quickly. Now, uh, Jeff Bezos, as well as, you know, Bill Gates, they both are, and also Al Gore, you know, they highlight uh, in, uh, investors that put $158 million into a company called Nature's Find, which is based out of Chicago. And they make uh, fake meat out of fungus. You know, not only just meat, but also dairy products like uh, cream cheese and things of that nature. Um, that's what we're faced with. Um, it's a, you know, the alternative protein uh, industry is, is, is doing very well right now. You know, again, Nature's Fine, they raised $158 million. But the alternative food sector, you know, has definitely skyrocketed in the year 2020, uh, growing U.S. retail sales at 27% and bringing the total market value to $7 billion. Now, this is an ascending, this is, is, is an ascending industry. And there's a reason why it's ascending. You know, and that, and that definitely centers around consumer demand, clim uh, impending climate change, current climate change, uh, and also just basically just overall agricultural production problems that are being enhanced by supply chain uh, breakdowns. So uh, Farmer Brown, let's touch on this some more. 733 billion. That's almost on par with the uh, U.S. agriculture by itself at one trillion. You know, why is this important? I, we had uh, discussed a few episodes back uh, when I was working on a research farm. You know, we had livestock. And these were huge animals that, you know, they had the power to knock down any fence that was on the farm at any given time. But they had been bred to be docile. They had been bred to only eat that which was in front of them. Uh, if the grass is low, then you're going to have to wait for one of us to come uh, bring you some feed. If there's no feed, then it's cutthroat. Uh, saying that to say we know we've written into this Constitution, you know, speaking to the B1 family, it's three-fifths of a human being, which, which boils down to livestock. Uh, if you also notice in that movie clip, I don't know if you saw the people with the masks on. 
you can't look at a clip like that and not, you know, have, you know, kind of look strange. It's talking about these large companies, these, this large company, Soylent, Soylent Company, that was producing this food. Yeah, we told y'all this was ocean plankton. Ah, but it wasn't. Uh, when we think about plant-based, I know one of the issues when we think about this uh, experimental medicine that's going around, oh, you know, we got to protect our patents, so we can't let you know what's inside of this uh, this vial. We can't let you really know what's inside of this meat because then you might take our you might take our idea and make your own. And so that makes sense as somebody that is a, the producer, as a corporation, but as consumers, as consumers who the majority of us aren't producing our own food or the majority of us aren't necessarily, and I'm not saying this in a shading way more so than just statistically, the average American is three generations away from a farm. All I can really speak on is my lived experience. The average person I come across knows more NBA players and entertainers than farmers. Uh, you know, we have lotteries for people to go get, you know, experimental medicine, but there's no lottery to meet a farmer, right? But saying that to say your odds of knowing something that distracts you is a lot more higher than something that can feed you. And I think with the ever-changing world, uh, some of these issues do have to be addressed. As the population is growing, people absolutely need to eat. Uh, that's, you know, I would suggest eating less you know, to, you know, for the broader issue, but that's something that has to be marketed over time, over culture. Uh, we have a generation, multiple generations now on this planet, like, hey, I'm used to eating three times a day. I'm used to eating two good meals a day. I'm used to being able to pull up at whatever restaurant or even, you know, DoorDash getting delivery. And so our consumer demands is what's driving this. Technically, fungus is edible. You know, fungus is edible. But when we think about, okay, we think about quality control. Uh, we also know Gates and Bezos between the two of them own hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland in North America. The reason why this, this story is very serious, because this isn't something that people are wanting to plan for the future. Like this is in motion, family. Uh, if, if you remember a few episodes back, we were discussing the first uh, lab-based meat production plant was opened up in Israel. This is a few weeks ago. Uh, and I think in 2000, I think the first lab grown burger cost about 250,000. That was back in what, 2016, 2017. It cost 250,000 to create a lab, a lab grown hamburger. Well, that number now in 2021 is about $23 a pound. And so now it's about $23 a pound to get lab grown meat. The goal of these companies, uh, like you're talking about, the major investing, the and major investments going into these alternative protein, is that we want to get. When I say we, I mean, you know, the scientific minds that's thinking these things up want to get it to where it's it's equal on the market value to say producing beef, and then you know, so, you know, for the brothers and sisters out there who do raise livestock, because this isn't just with uh, cows. This is with your poultry. This is what anything that we're raising, because we know in the melanated community, the majority of the income being generated is from raising livestock. Uh, like you said, they're talking about climate change back in the 70s. And OK, I know they didn't. You know, they, we, we didn't, you saw the computers that they had in that screen. And so we have a lot more uh, high tech uh, technology. We have a lot more machinery. Uh, we have 14, 15 year olds, is, you know, riding around, you know, and, you know, I don't have a problem with that, per se. But everything we ride, everything we use has to be powered by something. For it to be powered, meaning something has to be harnessed. We were talking also about uh, Mr. Moses and his, his uh, machine that could turn air into water. We also see that there is an active suppression of better ideas. So saying that to say as a community, you know, outside of just the conversation, I like to say, hey, family, this is something we need to discuss. But what are some direct action items? Because this is in motion. Like I said, Bezos just stepped down. Like, I'm cool on Amazon. I, I claim my fame there. Now I'm getting into feeding people. We've heard the stories, uh, some of the stories about some of the working conditions at Amazon. Uh, you know, since Gates got divorced, you know, he's had his, his little scandals pop up. And, oh, this the little this little uh, nerdy guy that pops up in the pink sweaters. And so uh, most companies are basically going to take on the personality of who founded them. Uh, here at B1 Ag, we're not here to disparage or throw shade more so than connecting dots. 
you know, do these people also in this soil and green, uh, it was talking about the elite were eating very different. I doubt the elite that we speak of uh, in 2021 are eating the same food that uh, the common Joe Schmo is eating. So saying that to say, what are we doing planning for this 2022 scenario? Twenty twenty two is definitely quickly approaching. We're already in July. You know, we're on our way into July and through it, you know, almost through the first week of July. So it's 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 approaching very, very quickly. One thing I forgot to add was so this this uh lab grown meat plant that opened in Israel, they're looking to have product in the shelf by twenty twenty two. Hmm. Coincidence, coinky dink, you know, is a life imitating art or is art imitating or predicting life? It's a good question to have. That's but that's why here at B1 Ag, we really promote growing your own food. Make sure that you go check us out, healthyblackfood.com. Sign up on how to grow your own food. Uh, Farmer Brown and I have a great program where we it's entertaining, educational. Uh, we presented the information in a way where you can uh, where you can ingest it and be successful in growing your own food. Healthyblackfood.com. But um, we really got to understand that plant based meat, alternative protein, it's here and it's really marketing. They're really ramping up the marketing and production of this food for us to consume uh, because Real life decisions are being made. Uh, the heat waves, as well as the droughts that are currently the mega droughts that are going on out the west, they're killing the water supply. You know, water is in very, very short supply. And you know, rain is not prevalent in the west. And that is affecting exactly how uh, much food can be grown. Uh, most farmers are having to make life decisions on, like some of them are not planning at all. They're not planting anything at all because they don't have the water to water the plants and don't know when rain is coming. Now we have the West, the whole entire West Coast, which is a huge worldwide producer for so many agricultural products. You know, that's that's going to that's that cascades down to shortages for not only America, but globally, because agriculture is the, our number one export item in this country is agricultural products so if there's uh events like these climate change events that are affecting production you know it's it's, it's going to affect the availability for food not only for us but as well as for all the countries that receive uh, or import our food from us so it is a real big issue and and for the b1 ag family i really would like to know like how do you feel about plant-based meat uh how do you feel about eating fake meat you know is it you know do you care does it matter to you um are you concerned about what plants are even being used in the in the production of these fake meats uh just just referring back to that movie soil and green you know they say again they say soil and green was supposed to be made out of uh, ocean plankton that comes to find out that it was made out of human bodies, human corpses. You know, how well do how how can how well can we trust these uh, huge companies when it comes to provide uh, really leaning on them for our food production? You know, is that even smart to do? I will say so as, as far as protein, you know, obviously there's other nutrients we need from other foods, but you can get protein from soya beans. And soya beans is actually what a lot of the plant-based uh, meats are, are, are consist of, quinoa, nuts, seeds, uh, cereals, and grains. So these are other sources of protein. However, like Bruh said, okay, what happens when the farms that are growing these alternative plants, you know, there's a heat wave and they're not growing? You know, uh, yeah, we definitely encourage the family to start gardening. You know, if you're in a small space, if you have a, a larger space, obviously, you know, grow harder, right? But what are we doing as far as storage? 
you know, while we're still technically in the time of plenty, meaning, okay, we can still grow some things. Are we thinking about storing food, uh, you know, canning, uh, smoking meat for people that eat meat? Uh, we really have to start thinking some of these things out. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it's an emergency, but let's be honest. I mean, here, uh, I, here in 2021, we see that we're going to have less food available. Uh, another one of those points made in the so Soil and Green clip is, oh, the prices were so high. Well, what's been happening over the, the spring and, and early summer? You know, we got barges that are getting shut down, getting stuck. We have shortages of all sorts of different food, you know, condiments, all sorts of uh, other products that we're getting from overseas. Our food system is very intertwined with the world, meaning if I just wanted to go to a store right now, I just want some American raised fish. I'm going to be hard pressed to find American raised fish. More than likely, it's going to be from Asia. <laughs> if I, if I want to go to the store for some good fruit that, that was grown locally, it's not to say nobody's growing apples or, or oranges, but more than likely, if I'm in what we call the state of Kentucky, it's going to have to come from somewhere where it's warmer, somewhere where there's a tropical climate. Our diets, you know, a lot of our diets have been marketed to us. You know, I'm not here. It's not my place to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't eat. But saying that to say a lot of what we eat in general has been marketed to us as, hey, this is what works best for you to have optimal health. You remember when we was in school, they had the little food charts, the little diagram, the little triangle. And every year that changes. Every year that changes. Well, last year I thought we needed more dairy. Well, this year they say less dairy. So saying that to say, family, nobody knows your body, our body, better than ourselves. We do know that we have to consume something that earth produces to not only get to the next day, but to thrive, to have energy. Soil and green, we're talking about cannibalism. You know, and it's cannibalism whether you knew you were eating a person or not. And I'm not going to step out and say, yeah, I think they're cooking up people. But we got to be very uh, conscientious about how, how, how dire this situation is about our food security. Humans can only go about three days without water before we start getting headaches and having serious physical conditions. We can only go a week or so. I think 14 days is the most without food until it, it gets cutthroat. You, you, you die. You expire. Your body has, you know, just like your phone has to be charged or it will no longer work. Our bodies were the first technology. And so what these companies, what your Bezos, your Gates, your other people involved is they're like, uh, well, hey, we know how to power computers. We'll figure out a way to power people. Believe it or not, the same faction of people that saw us as three-fifths of human being, some of them have progeny that, that happen to be billionaires that see people the same way. This isn't to be disparaging family more so than, okay, we see it with a movie like Soil and Green, nobody's just going to make that movie out of thin air. There were discussions being had amongst the writers. Uh, it makes me think of 1984 by George Orwell. And it's like, wow, you know, there's, there's so many similarities. It's like, how did these people come up with these concepts and they, they knew no, no, no such thing as a, uh, no, no such thing as a telescreen back then. But now we see the majority of the world, literally 4 billion of us are online looking at a screen, a telescreen. <laughs> there's a such thing as prophecy. I believe in the power of prophecy, but then I also believe in there's a power in truth. Now, I told you what I'm going to do. Now, if y'all get distracted by everything else between what I told you, hey, that's on y'all. But I told you the truth because you can't get power by your power source unless you're acting in truth. So saying that to say what truth are we operating in, family? Uh, we understand that the wealth of this nation was built on agriculture. It was built on the production. It wasn't built on consumption. You don't build anything consuming. What are we doing now to, to inspire the next generation of creators? What are we doing now as, you know, people still, you know, relatively young that might have space for one or two more uh, career changes to really focus on food security? Because within food security, you're covering so many different angles, marketing. For example, uh, you know, heaven forbid we have we raise another generation of us that just expects to eat fast food every day, all day and think that's cool, because then what will that turn into 30, 40 years down the road? It turns into more of these pre-existing conditions. 
in terms of the uh, what is it less lower sperm counts was which which is what we see going on in North America. I was just listening to a sister today were talking about colon cancer is up ridiculously from people born in the late seventies and eighties versus the people born in the earlier uh, earlier days your forties fifties and sixties less instances of it. Well, what's happened since the eighties? These sugar drinks, uh, highly processed foods. Like you said, you talk to some elders, they, they're like, I don't know what that is y'all are eating. I know what it looks like, but that ain't what it is. We, 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 we laugh and we have these conversations, but family, this is very serious. It's very serious. Uh, you know, we can make all the money in the world, but if the only thing you got to choose from is this high price fungus meat, what are the long-term effects of that? You know, I love soul food. You know, I, I come from a family of great cooks. But I uh, once my mom had cancer, not to put too much of my family's business out there, back in 94, that's when I was 14. We stopped eating smoked foods. It was a lot of, it was a lot of dietary changes. And, you know, I'm thankful that my mom recovered. But I also see, I also understand, okay, wow, there was a health benefit in changing certain foods that we eat. Because all of these things, all everything we consume has long-term effects, whether you're talking about what we're consuming in our mind, what we're consuming in our bodies. And I, I just can't feel comfortable about these people, you know, and all of these different ideas of how they're going to feed the world. And I, I would be more comfortable if I knew that, you know, just as much as we, we complain about police brutality, what were they talking about in Soil and Green? Police just scooping people up the road. What did your president just do? He's making it rain on the law enforcement, right? <laughs> Y'all, the world is changing before our eyes. And to get to the next day, we at least have to eat. We at least have to eat. Definitely, we have to eat. And it only makes sense that we take an active part in making sure that we are food secure. It only makes sense that we grow some of our own food, if only just to supplement part of our diet, just to make sure that regardless of what's going on in the world, uh, all this fake meat going around, or 3D printed chicken nuggets and uh, lab grown Petri dish made steaks, that we have an option that we created for ourselves, that we're gonna make sure that we're eating real organic foods that we know are good for us and we know that can sustain us i mean it's this is what's happening in real time people it's With coming people. to the hoods first trust please believe it please believe it it's coming to us first thing you know we're always the uh crash test dummies so to speak you know they're gonna uh you, we're gonna be the basis of their clinical trials you know, to put it in uh, scientific terms, but to put it in uh, layman's terms, yeah, we're going to be uh, usually the melanated communities are going to be the crash test dummies to see if this works. You know, so me personally, I would, I'd rather stick to the good old fruits and veggies that I'm used to, that I know that were put here by the creator and, you know, developed naturally for us to eat because that's what it's here for. Now, uh, but consumer demand, uh, co product production shortages, you know, they're faced, they're, they're creating a situation where we have to look towards alternatives. And I hope that our B1 Ag family can see this and see this is happening in real time and start looking for solutions themselves. Because when you leave, those solutions for someone else. There, those solutions may not necessarily work best in your favor. So we want to keep ourselves, we want to keep the B1 family, the B1 Act family in the best position to win, in the best position to eat, in the best position to be healthy and thrive. Hey, Popeyes. Yeah, this is Bill. Yeah, I hope everything's going well. Hey, we got this new fungus meat, and I was wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot you a couple million if y'all run one of those chicken sandwich campaigns y'all got going. Uh, I'm already making the rain on McDonald's. You know, I'm, I'm making their onions, carrots, and potatoes. And so, yeah, I want y'all to try this fungus, you know, me and Jeff are putting together. 
I know y'all are down on business. I know y'all could use some sort of economic uh, infusions. So why, why don't, why don't y'all promote this fungus meat for us in form of a sandwich? Go on and bread it up like your uh, normal chicken sandwich and see what that does for us. Uh, try it in these specific uh, zip codes and see how that works first. We'll, we'll have the first responders waiting. That's crazy. What is your alternative? Like we say, this is a, an ascending industry. And this ascending industry, and we're talking about just a plant-based or fake meat industry, you know, it's being headlined by Beyond Meats and Impossible Foods, whose alternative meat burgers, chicken and sausage products, uh, hey man, they're disrupting the $733 billion U.S. food and manufacturing industry. And because they're gaining so much of the market share so quickly, you know, this has prompted companies like Tyson Foods, Purdue, Horn Mill, Cargill, you know, other traditional meat producers to launch their own plant based or fake meat products. Matter of fact, uh, they're expecting plant based and cultured foods. Uh, they're protected to take a 60 percent market share of global meat sales by 2040. So they're pushing uh, by 2040 for there to be more fake meat than real meat. Like we're, like we're trying to get across to our B1AG family that fake meat is the wave of the future. This is what they're pushing. Uh, however you feel about it, good or bad, um, come up with we're trying to provide solutions uh, for uh, the B1AG family, the B1 family. To let us know that this is what's coming and hey it may be beneficial for you to go ahead and plant your own food go ahead and ramping that up and also especially uh i mean when we look at we think about farming we're looking at traditional farming you know plowing the fields and things like that but we need to look more into urban farm you know different ways of growing your own food in smaller spaces um do, doing more vertical farming uh using more aeroponics you know, looking at alternative ways to farm and grow your own food that just to ensure food security for your family, for yourself, for your community, and just for the B1 and for society at large. You know, this is for everyone. Um, we, we we focus on the B1 family because usually we're the, la we're the last ones to, 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 to really jump on board, so to speak. We're the last ones, you know, we, we're usually we act, we react to things. And um, this, we're just trying to keep pace of the trends and what's going on. This gives us an opportunity to be proactive instead of reactive when it comes to our food security. Farmer Brown, do you got any uh, last statements before we get up out of here? Cooperatives, cooperatives, cooperatives. You know, uh, in a time like we're going through right now, you know, I don't know too many individuals that could just, uh, you know, come out of pocket and, and provide a whole community with their, you know, annual intake of birds, you know, for people that are in their chicken. I don't know too many individuals who can just take it upon themselves to uh, just go invest in cattle by themselves. You're looking at about 2,000 a head. You know, once, once you know, good cattle because all, all cattle isn't created equally. But these are opportunities to go in together. You know, you can split a single cow up with four families. That That's about a year's worth of beef if you're into eating meat. Uh, raising chickens. And so I know up here in Kentucky, you, you ride through some of the hoods now where me and my peoples grew up. Uh, the people that I grew up with don't live in these houses no more. But, you know, people from below the border, it's almost like lifestyle. They're going to have chicken coops. They raise their chickens in the backyard. Uh there's really no laws against that. It seems weird. You know, most of us came up that, oh, you know, we can't raise chickens inside of a city. These are cooperative opportunities, y'all. Going in on some birds, raise them. Hey, we're going to designate these 10 yards over here. We're just going to raise. We're going we're gonna to get a head count in the community. Hey, how many of y'all are interested in this? We have a communal pot. We can meet at the, the, the park. We can meet at the, the uh, Neighborhood Association Center. 
you know, pay our dues and it's going to go directly into this this uh, food protection program. And I'm just making this up, but I'm being very serious. Uh, we know we're going to need X amount of square feet of produce. And so yard, we're going to allocate five yards. Y'all have, you know, between all of y'all, y'all have a couple of acres. OK, cool. This is where we're going to get our carrots instead of getting Mr. Gates's carrots. OK, uh, y'all, y'all don't have as large amount of acres, but y'all still have enough for your garlic, your onions. OK, we got some facilities. All they have to do is be kind of hollowed out. We're going to create some jobs for some of the young men and women around here who understand carpentry. We're going to grow our greens inside using some of these urban gardening techniques. OK, man, I'm in the hood and I, I don't know where to start. This is opportunity for some of the farmers losing money right now because of what's going on on the broader agricultural scale. These should be your teachers. These should be your teachers. They can tell you a lot about growing hands on. And so once again, well, you got to be a friend to make a friend. Cooperative economics. Economy isn't all about money. It's making things move. And we need to make our food system move in a way that is conducive to the B1 family. Not just us who are living now, but those that come after us. We see that they've thought this out to 2040. By 2040, we want 60% of the meat that people consume to be fake. And we're going to make it. What's hap- So what's happening between 2020 and 2040? People are losing land. You know, farmers who've been able to keep, you know, especially the black farm, melanated farmers who've been able to keep their family, keep their farms and their family for X amount of years. Okay, man, you're taking the livestock industry away from me. What am I going to do? And so you're looking at a lot of other negative impacts outside of just, you know, tractors and, and, you know, whatever these, you know, weird notions that a lot of us have about farming. This is serious business, family. Uh, Bob Johnson, we'll talk about that a little later. He, he was touching upon just the issues going on with black farmers and black agriculture. Uh, once again, I, I don't like to end any conversation on a negative note. This is a huge opportunity for us, not only in an existential way to figure out our food system, but this is a huge way to reassert this black magic and these black minds to solving problems. Problem being, I don't want my kids growing up in a world where their only choice of food is fungus based. Or plants that, you know, well, I can't really tell you what's in it because it's, it's infringing on my patent rights. That's not cool because when something goes bad, you think about the experimental medicine. You can't sue anybody. You know, these are big. The people who are talking about cre- creating our food for the future are not farmers. They're people who got big in tech. I ain't throwing shade at tech. The owner, the founder of Google, he's heavily vested in. I, I just learned this a few weeks ago. He's heavily vested in the alternative protein movement. And so you have the people, and I mean, I hate to say it, family, but uh, computers control the world. You know, we are we are locked into our devices. And the people who are, uh, you know, wanting to create this meat, these new forms of food, are the ones who create these devices. They create the programs that all of us interface with. Uh, extreme right, extreme left, center, don't care. Whatever. If you have a stomach, guess what? You have to eat. And you have a handful of people in the world who, you know, they they can fly wherever is nice and eat something natural. We don't want to create a soil and green situation, family. And we have more than enough time right now. We have more than enough people who who've decided they're not going to go back to the uh, corporate plantation or go back to work. This is a great time as, as our innovative minds are working. Okay, instead of me figuring out how can what, what does Stephen A. Smith say? I wake up every morning trying to figure out how I can make boss some money. How can I wake up every morning to make sure I'm doing something that can make sure people in the community are eating? It's not about saving the world, family. Our ancestors, you know, before there was such thing as large civilizations, handful of groups and tribes. You know, we like to talk about ancient times. They had to figure out how to feed them each other. And so, if we can literally Head black to the garden, apply that same knowledge, apply that same thought behind, okay, maybe I shouldn't get so used to going to these drive throughs Maybe I shouldn't be like 100% dependent on there being a store that's available that's going to have food. What happens when the stores that are available, like you live in this go, this, this is the, this is the only meat we got. Oh, you ain't got a car? You ain't, you ain't got one of those uh, uh, elevated car, what are they, the uh, hover cars? Oh, you don't have a bus that comes in your area? Well, this is all you're going to eat. Wherever you stay at, there's flat land. Wherever you stay at, there's space where you can put a container, fill it with soil, 
some sort of matrix, compost, and plant something. That's why we talk about if you really want to know something, learn how to grow something, because it's not just, oh, I can plant these little cute flowers. It's about once once your mind understands the concept of how things are produced, then you'll be able to tailor your knowledge to your situation, to your area, to your region. When I talk about do it in love, it ain't, oh, I just want to save the world. And no, it's love meaning, hey, you know, I'm in, in my space where I'm at, I'm protected. The more of us to value this space and are willing to, you know, <laughs> protect this space. So let's create more spaces where we're growing some food. Because somebody else is thinking about it, too. <laughs> and if they're thinking about it, especially if thinking about creating this food to give to us, we definitely need to think about creating food for ourselves. Because me personally, uh, I would choose collard greens over soylent green any day. Collard greens over soylent green. That's my word for the day. Again, go to healthyblackfood.com. Healthyblackfood.com. Let's get black to the garden. Learn how to grow your own food. Healthyblackfood.com. Go ahead and sign up. Uh, also, you know, if you want to reach out to B1Ag, hit us up at B1AgHipHop at gmail.com. Hit us up. Let us know what's going on. Let us give us a question. Uh, we might be able to send some uh, information your way. Hopefully we will. We want to be able to really be a conduit, not only of these stories and um, and just uh, conversations, but, you know, exchange great information as well. Create uh, exchange of uh, important information, especially when it comes to, you know, providing your own food and becoming more self-sustainable because ain't nobody going to love you like you. Please believe it. Ain't nobody going to love you like you. And ain't nobody going to care about what you eat like you. So, Farmer Brown, we had a great talk, discussion today. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we talked about the soil and green and, you know, and the possibilities of the ramifications, just the implications of this movie. That's, and like you brought up a very good point, that soil and green was very eerily similar to 1984 you know there's a lot of there is a lot of prophecy what would appear to be prophecy in that movie that came out in 1973 that directly reflects the agricultural and ecological problems that we're facing right now in 2021 now this movie came out in 1973 but it was made it was based around the year 2022 which is less than which is less than six months away. So we need to really open our eyes, pay attention, you know, get our, and start digging in this dirt. Let's get our, get our prints in the mud. So at the end of the day, Farmer Brown, if the people really want to know something, you know, know something that's going to be beneficial for them, know something that's going to keep them in a growth mindset, uh, know something that's going to help them advance, become more sustainable. Uh, what do they need to do, bro? If you really want to know something, this is collard greens over soylent greens. Let's learn how to grow something. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone have a prosperous day. That's the a abundant. Term, <laughs> collard greens over soylent green. You know what I'm saying? Especially, and also, you know, I'd rather have collard greens over, uh, over, over, uh, ill begotten profits, you know, collard greens over money. You know, collard greens, it is money. But I hope you all have a wonderful day. Be prosperous, be abundant. You know, I hope that uh, you find yourself again, just growing. You Got to stay growing, keep it growing. You know, that's the only way we're going gonna to make it. Got to keep going and keep growing. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for checking in with B1AG. Uh, Daily Bread Podcast. We'll be back very soon. And we're going to keep it growing. We're going to keep it going. And we're going to keep drilling in your mind. You know, if you really want to know something, learn how to grow something. You have a wonderful day. See you next time.